every phenomenon. Stone skipping. Why? Stone skipping is just one of the many other everyday but intriguing phenomena that can be understood using a number of tools and the concept of physics, such as hydrodynamics, momentum, and gravity. Although the phenomenon is well known, it does raise a number of questions, such as why does a stone skip at all? Some people think that it's magic, while others think that there are quite trivial mechanisms behind it. Now, there is evidence to prove that using physics, that all these are natural phenomena. After all, physics is about discovering and explaining the natural phenomena that is occurring around us. Now, why does the skip? Principle of conservation of momentum is that as the stone pushes some of the water downwards, the stone is forced upwards, whereby force equals the hydrodynamic pressure times the area of stone. The boundary principle also says that the total energy in the path of steady flowing fluid system is constant. Therefore, an increase in speed will cause a decrease in pressure. In the case of a stone, the stone is shaped such a way that the air flowing above the stone will have a higher velocity and the air flowing below the stone will have a lower velocity, thus resulting in a higher pressure below the stone and a lower pressure above the stone, which result in the motion called lift. Now let's look at the conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum says that the force equals the hydrodynamic pressure times the area of the stone. So what is hydrodynamic pressure? This brings us back to the fluid mechanics, where in this phenomenon we have two types of things, the hydrodynamic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure, where the hydrodynamic pressure is the difference between fluid pressure of a given point and the hydrostatic pressure. And the hydrostatic pressure is a pressure at a point in the fluid at rest due to the weight above it which is also known as gravitational pressure. So the case, there must be one main condition that needs to be fulfilled, whereby the velocity of the stone must be bigger than root of 2 theta g l, whereby v equals the velocity, theta equals the angle of stone entering the water, and g equals 9.1, like the, and then where l equals the length of the stone traveled before hitting the water. Okay, maybe I've heard from some other people that in order to make the stone jump, we need to spin the stone. Okay, spinning is not in the concept of the equation of for the stone to jump, but it's a necessary process. Reason why? We progress the ability to have a let the stone have a fixed path in the projectile motion, and then in the control of theta, as mentioned earlier, the angle of the stone entering the water, which is provided the angular momentum. But how is completely steep achieved by spinning the stone? Look at the YouTube video. Okay, now since we already know the scientific and theoretical part of how the stone skipping works, now let me introduce to you the application of the stone skipping concept in our past lives. In World War II in Europe, the European they planted this bouncing ball into the water and allowed it to bounce into them and allowed it to explode the enemy them in order for good attack. 